Alrighty, so in this video, we are going to now take a look at getting this thing, this tool to actually do something. So I think what we're going to start with, at least in this video, is getting it to create the root folder. And in order to do that, we need to allow the user to give some sort of input and then hit a button. So let's uh, hop over into Mono Develop over here. And what I want to do is actually put this into a horizontal layout because I want a label and a text field. So I'm going to do editor GUI layout dot begin horizontal. And anytime you do that, you want to make sure that you add the closing horizontal. So end horizontal. All right. It's easy to forget. So I've just gotten into the habit of uh, actually setting that up before I do anything else. All right. So with that, let's go back to Unity and check it out. And you might not see anything actually update uh, inside of the window over here. And what we need to do, it's either lost the reference um, or we need to do a repaint. So what we're going to do is we're going to say win.repaint. So repaint the whole window. We might have to actually relaunch it. Right, so I lost the instance. So let's just go to my tools, projects, project setup. All right, so I'm going to clear this out just to make sure. Okay, so now uh, what I want to do is add that uh, text field. And we should also just make sure that we have this reference. So we'll say if win does not equal null. All right, then we'll repaint. Uh, so in here, what I want to do is create a editor GUI layout dot text field. And this needs a string to update. And you could also give it a GUI style too, if you want. Uh, you could also give a label, but I'm just going to use this one. So in order to actually store what the user types in here, we need a variable. So I'm going to create a private variable of type string, and I'm going to call this the uh, message or call it game name. How about that? And we'll initialize it to something like just game. Okay, so then we'll put in a game name, like so, and game name will be equal to that. There we go. All right, so let's take a look. There we go. So now we can go in and actually type in something, uh, like so. So now what we'll do is... Um, let's actually get rid of the label and let's utilize the label field inside of here. So let's just say um, game name. Oops. There we go. And I believe that's the correct. Yeah. So label text. It's the third override there. There we go. That's better. Okay, so with that, uh, what we want to do is now put a button into here. So right after all of this stuff right here, after the uh, text field, let's do let's say if GUI layout dot button, and we want to give it a name. So this name is going to going to be create uh, project structure. How about that? And what I'm going to do is going to set it to a height explicitly of 35 so it doesn't come out looking all default like those really skinny unity buttons um, all right and we can also do a GUI layout dot expand width just to make sure it all fully expands let's just set that to true all right and in here we can just put a debug for now we'll say debug dot log and we'll say creating folders Boom. All right. So now if I hit this, we're creating the folders. Very cool. And we're capturing the user input. So at this point, we now have everything that we need to um, set up or provide information that the user has given to the tool, um, to the code that follows all this. So what I want to do is I actually want to call a another method. And I'm just going to split it out um, just because... I like to keep all my custom code um, 
apart from Unity's base code. So everything we're doing here is pretty much Unity specific. Uh, the code that I put in this next method here, I uh, will say create project folders. This is all going to be my own custom code. So instead of this debug debug.log right here, we'll say create uh, project folders. All right, and because we're storing the game name in this uh, globally accessible variable, we don't need to pass it. Pass it in. I can get to it from here. So game name. All right, so that, now we can test that out. We can say debug.log, creating folders. There we go, creating, creating folders. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to make it so that we can uh, create a root folder. And in order to do that, we need to access uh, the system.io namespace inside of Windows. That way we can create our own directory. Okay, so let's go take a look at how to do that. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we want to do is go to the very top of the script up here. And I want to type out using system.io. And the reason why we're doing this is because this will allow us to create new directories um, inside of Unity. It gives us access to the uh, directory info uh, classes and methods and stuff like that. So uh, what we want to do down here is let's first get the path. All right, so we're going to call this the asset path. And this is going to be our application.datapath. Okay, so let's um, actually debug log that just so we can see what it does. All right, so debug.log, we'll say asset path. Now this will get us all the way, or this will return for us a path to our Unity project. So if I were to hit this, you can see that we have the full path. So all we need to do to create a directory is to just append the name that we get here to that. So uh, let's do that pretty simple. So uh, what I want to do is just say string um, root path is equal to the asset path plus forward slash, right? Because we need to make sure that we're not creating it at the asset path. We want to create it inside of that. All right. Plus the game name. And then what we can do is we can say directory dot create directory and just give it a path. You can see the overrides here. So we'll say root path. Now, if that works, we should now get a folder inside of our Unity project here called game. So I'm going to create project structure. And you can see that nothing actually happened. Let me actually refresh this. And there you go. So what we need to do, the reason why it didn't actually show us the folder on creation is because we didn't uh, uh, refresh the entire asset database. All right, so let me delete that. And what I'm going to do is go back here. And so after we create that directory, what we, what we want to do is we want to say asset database dot refresh, just so it forces the new folder to show up in our project. All right, so let's test that out. So we're taking it step by step here. All right, so we'll say create project structure, and boom, there we go. We now have a folder. Okay, so a couple things here, just uh, from a usability standpoint, uh, we don't want the user to, the ability to create a, a game called game. Well, you might want to, but what my point is, we want to run a bunch of checks here to make sure that this isn't empty. First off, that it isn't necessarily called game, but if it is, uh, then let the user decide if they want to create that particular project. So uh, what I want to do is before we even go and start creating all this information right here, the root folder, I want to say if uh, string dot is null or empty, and I want to check that game name, I want to make sure. So if it is actually empty, we're just going to return right here. So we're going to say return. We're not going to run any code. And then I want to say if uh, game name is equal to game, 
then let's ask a question here. So what we what we could do is we could say uh, display dialog or editor, sorry, editor GUI utils, I think it is. Editor utilities dot display dialog. And the reason why I want, I want to use this one is because it actually returns a bool. So I'm going to wait for the user to make a choice here. So it, basically, if this returns uh, true, then we're OK. Then let's let them um, you know, go forward and constantly or go and create the folders. If it's false, then just exit. So that's what we want to do. All right, so they have two overrides here. So we need the title message, the OK, and the cancel string. So we're going to say uh, project uh, setup warning. And um, we'll say, do you really want to call your project game? Question mark. And then we want to say uh, yes. And then we'll say no. All right. And we need to put this all inside of an if statement. Like so. So if that's true, then uh, we will let them go. Uh, if it's false, so we can just do one check here. So if it's false, then we'll just say return. There we go. Perfect. All right, and then the last thing I really want to do, again, is I want to check to see if we have that static instance, the window. If we do, I'm just going to say close. Because at this point, we've gone and created all the project folders and the scenes and everything. And we can now just close the window so the user doesn't have to close the window manually. All right, so let's take a look and see what we got. So I'm actually going to relaunch it here. All right, so I'm going to leave it as game. Do I really want to call your project game? No. And that should return it. So what we, what we need to do is actually close it after that. But let's test and see if it'll let me through. And it, in fact, does. So let's take care of that edge case. Uh, what we're going to do is just copy this code right here. Right? Or you can put it in another method like so, just to keep it clean. So you can say close window. So you're not constantly typing that over and over again. So we'll replace that with close window. Just keeps it cleaner, more organized. All right, so let's go test that out. And then we'll close out the video here. Cool. Do you really want to call your project game? You need to spell that correctly. Say no. And then we'll say yes. It already created one. There we go. So then we'll do, let's say, we'll call this uh, shooter. Now we have shooter. All right. So that is the basics of that particular um, setup right there. So in the next video, let's go and get all of these sub folders created and uh, walk through that process. Thanks so much.